So thanks for tuning in to Talking Point. I'm your host, Neeraj Shah. The conversation these days seems to be completely engulfed by what's happening to yields. And in between, you will hear a piece or two about where the valuations are and then conversations about liquidity thrown in. The idea is to try and make sense of what each of these moving parts together mean for equities as they trade currently and what they could mean for equities over the course of the next uh, say 12 to 24 months. We thought let's pose all of these difficult questions uh, to our guest. He's joining us on Bloomberg Coin for the first time. Uh, Mrinal Singh, CIO and CEO of Incred Asset Management. Uh, and Mrinal, great having you. Thanks so much for taking the time out. Thanks. Thanks, Neera. Thanks for getting me over. Now the pleasure is ours. So Mrinal, um, makes sense for us. Let's try and uh, piece this together in two or three buckets. And let's start off with the with what the global piece is because that is undoubtedly impacting the mood of the market and causing volatility as well. How, how worried or not worried are you about this whole conversation about inflation and yields and the impact that it has on equities, both global and local? So, well, uh, inflation obviously matters a lot more to the bond markets and uh, there is genuine concern the bond markets are showing. Uh, you know, if inflation does rise, and sustains and becomes uh, stiff. I think uh, the bonds will kind of uh, reflect that in the yield stiffening. Uh, they keep uh, looking at the regulators and the policymakers to give them, uh, you know, comfort and and direction in that. But then, uh, does it matter to the equity markets? The reality is yes. In terms of uh, uh, at least the fundamental cash flow discounting rates, uh, the risk rates do matter. Uh, so if we do deviate at some point in the future uh, from the ultra competitive stance that most uh, regulators have had or central bankers have had, I think uh, there would be a readjustment uh, on the equity valuations. But then having said that, uh, we've generally seen that uh, it does not happen in absence of a good economic activity or growth. So well, uh, again, uh, as an extension to it would be that what we have seen uh, largely up till now is a broader market moving up uh, and you know largely everything that has been in the listed space let's say or the recipient of uh, the liquidity that has been floating around maybe it's stimulus be it uh, the low interest rates whichever way now going ahead let's say if uh, if we envisage a scenario like what you are articulating we might have uh, you know different return streams for different companies or different sectors now, and that is where I think uh, a lot of uh, active management of uh, investment comes into play. So I guess uh, there's a there's a good element to it. There is a worrying element to it. And there is a, you know, there's a normal element to it. When I say normal, you know, that's part of the cycles, you know, uh, things. There are uh, cycles when these stances are very accommodative. There are uh, cycles when, you know, to maintain inflation, the interest rates could move up. Uh, the bonds are kind of reflecting that. But uh, to, to the uh, specific point that uh, will inflation worry uh, the markets, the bond markets definitely yes. The equity markets to a lesser degree again yes. Uh, but then to active money manager, that's an opportunity as well. Yeah, in fact, that was going to be my next question. That if indeed the markets get 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 worried by this whole rhetoric about inflation and yields, and we've seen. Uh, very recent instances of that. Would you use these minor corrections and oppor as opportunities, or would you believe that? Uh, and of course, part two of my question would be: Would you believe that this has the power to cause a larger correction, or or you believe that that would be ruled out? That there could be small instances of the markets getting worried, and that could happen every now and then. But a large correction because of the yields is ruled out. So well, uh, uh, let's let's look at the brighter side of things. Uh, we are not going to have, uh, you know, either inflation or uh, or uh, rates being increased by the regulator unless there is uh, solid evidence of, uh, you know, let's say, uh, you know, growth, uh, uh, you know, because inflation per se would mean that uh, demand is outstripping supply. Now that's a very good scenario. Uh, well, inflation has to be controlled, wherein we have to increase supply. That also means that there could be, you know, uh, you know, capex done to increase supply because demand is uh, exceeding that, and which is which is good. I mean, I think economy like India would clearly benefit uh, if we have investment to capex. But then we are uh, in this context, we are talking mostly about the Western developed world. Uh, I mean, if there is, uh, and history has enough data points around that, if we do see minor corrections, and corrections are part of any market actually. 
so if we do see corrections uh, uh, and that particularly led by let's say the developed world let's say the us or europe or whatever uh, uh, i'm not trying to say that it is going to happen anytime soon or uh, whatever i have views in either ways but then if it does happen i think that's a great buying opportunity because i think uh, uh, once the uh, concern on corona and related impact on economic activity behind uh, once uh, we have seen the worst of economic data and uh, economic activity behind i think uh, uh, there is only one way and that way is up uh, and that could potentially go uh, involving you know uh, uh, getting right kind of businesses at interesting prices so corrections are always a great or dips are always a great time to buy uh, and most uh, investors uh, the seasoned ones the active ones will will be keenly waiting for the right prices and uh, if i may use the word pounce on those prices you know and make the most for their uh, investors i think that would be a great opportunity to buy there is no two ways about it okay so uh, having settled debate number 1 in the last 5 minutes let's talk about the other point and i i see uh, i see varying opinions on the sell side about the rising commodity prices and the impact they could have on earnings and the degree to which the investor should be worried about these now you would have done at your house uh, your internal assessments about the companies within your portfolios and coverage or not coverage in your but portfolios and what kind of impact can it have what's your sense for now i mean would these have a large telling impact or is it difficult to say because we don't know whether the prices will stay high for the foreseeable future and even if there is a impact is it a cause for worry or do you think the market will be able to digest this so uh, commodities uh, you know two three angles uh, the commodity that really matters to india on a worrying part is actually let's say crude so if crude remains stiff and high i think it it does cause a botheration because uh, that that does uh, destroys the entire uh, theme of things particularly on the government balance sheet and it uh, in a way takes away the uh, disposable income uh, from the larger mass of the consumers but then uh, if we have a gradual uptake let's say in agri commodities i think that's a good thing why because uh, you know uh, agri commodities uh, that's the way we look at it the agri commodities price going up gradually is actually benefiting the rural producers so unless it starts spurring the core inflation a gradual constant increase in agri commodity prices i i look at it very favorably it creates uh, larger incomes for the rural folks and it does uh, go to the consumption capability of a large population in india so uh, if if it is going to be agri in a gradual way i think it is nice it is good now if it is crude it is worrying uh, it impacts the currency it impacts uh, in all kinds of deficits and government's ability to spend uh, as well as consumers ability to consume uh, if it is uh, you know other uh, base metal commodities let's say uh, things like iron ore Uh, or something i don't know in a way still uh, benefits uh, we do uh, are an exporter as a nation we are an exporter of uh, iron ore but then uh, largely it starts reflecting in steel aluminum uh, and the base metal so uh, beyond a point we start seeing that you know it starts impacting demand now if we have to invest in infrastructure i think it is imperative that we have a modest uh, price on the consumption uh, of these things but then we also uh, see companies which are producers of uh, these or refiners of these uh, commodities which benefit but we've generally seen if you look at the demand pattern the uh, the demand for base metals is largely governed by the consumption trend for let's say china i mean in almost all the base metal commodities uh, china is almost a 50% consumer if you look at the data so Uh, depending upon how the chinese economy is going to look at uh, consumption pattern on base metals i think that governs the prices of uh, those commodities so i mean to answer your question you know uh, commodities have to be split in my eyes at least we need to split it three ways uh, crude uh, obviously it worries uh, and it's not the right kind of increase agri commodity in a modest form moving up i think it's good uh, as long as it doesn't stoke inflation in a meaningful way and base metals going up is both good and bad it is good for some companies is uh, not so good for some other companies but largely governed by china so that's how i look at it but then it looks like uh, at least uh, the outlook seems to be on the positive trajectory for the prices on all three let's see uh, hopefully it should not reach a point where uh, it starts uh, or it stretches the elasticity on the consumption side of all these uh, uh, commodities in particular
Okay, and and I'll come to I'll, I'll revisit this answer in just a moment. But just before we get to specifics, Miral, a question on valuations as well, right? Everything is good at a price, and I think uh, there are a number of uh, data points thrown out there. You can slice and dice data whichever way you want. Uh, you would know that. But a number of data points thrown out there which speak about uh, the Nifty current valuations compared to its long-term averages, both on PE and price to book, and the relative valuations that the mid caps and small caps have vis-a-vis -vis the Nifty. I heard you mention at the start of the conversation that the last few days the mid caps and small mm -hmm. caps have actually done reasonably okay. What's your sense of how does I mean setter is fabulous, everything else remaining constant? What's your sense of what happens to uh, the headline index, even if it doesn't create wealth, but it, it will be a barometer of the sentiment and then the broader end of the spectrum and how are you guys at internet positioning your portfolios accordingly so well uh, i'm very clear i think the next five years at least in the way i see uh, the index might uh, might uh, deviate meaningfully uh, from uh, what potential good stock picking uh, could deliver uh, we've seen such phases in the past uh, you know uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, ETF oriented or index oriented monies which has, uh, you know, uh, kind of elevated the broader uh, uh, market ease or price to books, uh, whichever way you want to call it. And uh, I have always looked at index uh, like it's a rear view mirror, you know, it's it's about the companies which have done well in the past. We are in a we are in an era where disruption is happening at a very, very rapid pace. I mean, if I just look around we might potentially have uh, at least 20% of the companies getting changed in next two years in Nifty. I mean, that's the kind of uh, listings that are planned, uh, if I may look. So we are talking about uh, when we look at Nifty, I mean, I don't even want to spend time trying to calculate what the price to earning price to book. It is about the past. It doesn't matter much, frankly. It's an index which uh, we need to see. We need to track the world will continue. But if you ask me, will Nifty look very different in two, three years? The answer is a definite yes. We have very large businesses waiting to get on to listing and I think in no time they will be in the index. And we are also talking about very huge disruptions. What, what the last one year has done is clearly uh, you know, made a dent into way consumption and consumer behavior is perceived. And all businesses are trying to adapt to a new way of consumption, a new way of life. The consumers are very clear uh, now as in there is, there is going to be e-commerce, it is going to be meaningfully bigger. Uh, so there is going to be disruption in all kinds of industries which we thought that could never be disrupted. We are talking about electric mobility, we are talking about host of things. So uh, I think uh, we got to look about how the future looks like, which are the businesses and the management which are geared for it, who've got the capability to make it through. We, it is a crowded space. A uh, lot of a uh, lot of these disruptions are more or less certain, uh, but then in terms of timeline, in terms of capability, which many businesses do make it. I think it's a, it's a golden period for active money managers lying ahead. Uh, an index uh, will just uh, clutter your thought. It will just bound your thought. I think you have to break out of that uh, uh, mental barrier and just look beyond. Look five years ahead and you will see that uh, it, the world is going to look very different. The sky will be very, very different. So. Index is it is about the past. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it's worthwhile spending too much time calculating the broader ratios on the index. Uh, similarly, for the small caps, I'm just trying to figure out that would the sentiment around the broader end of the spectrum be different if indeed, uh, if indeed the market in wisdom sees that how compared to averages, compared to m many other factors the mid caps and small caps might be trading at some point of time at a discount and that just keeps the overall sentiment around that pocket either positive or negative do you think that will happen or again the markets will ignore it largely so well uh, we are going to see uh, a large amount of businesses graduate from mid cap largest mid cap to uh, large cap i mean that's inevitable it has always happened it's going to get accelerated in there so well for an uh, classical investor the hunting ground uh, or the landscape is actually limited in small cap. There is no no two ways about it. That's the place to be uh, in terms of uh, you know continuing to find potential investments. And this is this is like you know what you read in the books. You know you you look at the business, you look at the management, look at the potential of what they are trying to target. And uh, if you get it right uh, in terms of both business and management, I think uh, there is a large amount of returns uh, potentially waiting. Now uh, the disclaimer is. 
the markets will have its own uh, cycle in the meanwhile the markets will go up they'll go down but then eventually uh, the the uh, stock prices or the market caps will align to the earnings and the growth and i think the potential to grow in mid and small cap and small cap is such a large space now i mean if you look at the definition of sebi i mean top 250 yeah. stocks the mid and large cap is over so i think the the in in at least when i started my career in investing you know what used to be mid cap now thing is largely in the small cap domain so besides the top 250 stocks everything is small cap and now that's the hunting ground that's the place that is what excites me and every day i end up uh, you know stumbling upon a business which is doing something so interesting and mm-hmm. it makes me wonder uh, are we doing justice to uh, you know putting our minds to so many entrepreneurs it is very very exciting to see you know we have so many entrepreneurs you know trying to do so many things i mean uh, we've got a great future on that space uh, and there is a lot that will change in the future so mr nal before we get into these discussions about themes that could do well can you tell without getting into names of course because this is not a place for recommending stocks or whatever so don't name the businesses but are there some really exciting things that you see in the entrepreneurs during what is it that really stood out for you in the last few three months when you heard of a, a particular segment of a business or a particular thing that a particular entrepreneur is pursuing so well uh, uh, i keep stumbling upon maybe it's just me or us uh, i i see a broader term that being used fintech now fintech is some place that we see a lot of enterprising businesses so it's not about putting technology to bring loan to you or something of that sort you know the backbone the way consumers want to consume credit uh, to what access what speed you can bring things on table then we see a lot of interesting businesses happening in the rural space so we quite upbeat about uh, businesses uh, which are facing rural india uh, we are upbeat about healthcare i think healthcare people have just woken up due to the corona incidents that we've had in last one year globally healthcare is not only about pharma i mean even yesterday we had the quad meeting and uh, india proposed that we will manufacture vaccines for the world going ahead so we emerged as a powerhouse uh, in the healthcare space particularly pharma and we have, we have just crashed the uh, you know uh, let's say the tip of it uh, i would say i mean healthcare is a broader term uh, i would say we see a lot of scope over there and uh, things like biomedical waste treatment things like you know healthcare i mean if if uh, i would not be surprised at some point you know uh, that hospitals could potentially or healthcare as a general at least could be part of infrastructure definition itself i mean at the end of it uh, having hospital beds is infrastructure i mean that is what we needed uh, to tackle corona so so we see scope for healthcare we see, see a lot of scope for housing uh, both on the construction side as well as on the lending side uh, mortgage business around that so we see uh, utilities as very interesting uh, very stable incomes uh, very cash rich uh, we also see infrastructure as a great place and technology so these are places where we clearly see very very interesting businesses uh, very good prospects and very enterprising minds uh, who are trying to do some things very new along with so i will club the uh, financial parts with fintech and say technology and finance combined something of that sort and i think that's a great place i would say rural utilities housing healthcare infrastructure technology very very good what about what about pockets which are on the throes of potentially making a bit of a u turn and uh, you know i would want to talk about the current buzzing environment in psus they seem to be optically turning a corner in terms of how the government is viewing them how there is interest in snapping them up should the opportunity arise and the valuation comfort being there too now again i i heard you mention that valuation is a rear view mirror metric so to say but be that as it may they are not trading at very high valuations so are are you as a private fund manager thinking of allocating large pools of capital to psus at all or are you shying away so uh, we've seen uh, uh, government uh, policies uh, you know swing uh, they've always had the intent of doing this investment uh, let me be very clear and something or the other uh, kept on uh, you know the stopping or making things happen this time i think we see a very determined uh, commitment to take it through and uh, i won't be surprised at least uh, one or two cases shows go through and i think it's uh, it's a, a step in the right direction uh, in terms of valuation there is no denying uh, a lot of government businesses uh, could be very very attractively priced and if this switches to something more private and efficient i think 
there is a large uh, value unlocking waiting for that to happen and we obviously would be keen in a limited way we would participate uh, we would like to uh, have our own uh, you know picks in that space something which is more uh, i would say a bit more esg compliant uh, something that has uh, more cash flow orientation something that potentially uh, could uh, could be you know uh, could be easy to for a private sector to absorb into existing business and uh, add value something of that sort so uh, these are things that we look uh, and we do evaluate uh, all the pso businesses uh, like we do normal businesses uh, but we do uh, also keep in mind that uh, there is uh, government ownership over there uh, and then at times things could be you know highly influenced by what the intent uh, of the government could be and which might not necessarily for right or wrong reasons be economic in nature Uh, so well that's uh, that's how we look at it uh, but then uh, i think uh, uh, we have seen the rigor and commitment to get the disinvestment through uh, is is the strongest i've seen in the last uh, 7 10 years and i am i'm quite uh, i won't be surprised at least one or two cases should go through and that will open the gates for a lot of uh, activity in that zone okay my final question a lot of things look good the common consensus is that uh, things are looking rosy where is it that you are worried be it on the market front and the common answer could be crude or geopolitics and be it on the thematic front are there pockets where you believe either due to valuation or due to less favoritism or what have you that they could lag uh the winners so well uh, i think uh, the broader valuations are worrying uh, there's no denying that uh, worrying in the sense they are on the stretch side let's say uh, uh, one standard or two standard deviation uh, ahead of the long term averages Uh, at least some of it, at least a part of it, can be justified by potential uh, growth in earnings that can come across, but not all of it uh, might be justified. Uh, I also worry there could be uh, swings in the market uh, led by external uh, uh, risk, you know, something that could emerge from the Western or the developed world that can happen. But broadly, I also think that are uh, too much focus, too much money, too much talk happens around the larger businesses. I think. the reality is that in the smaller side is where real action is happening and i, I guess uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, effort and uh, reward waiting over there or uh, uh, besides that i would say uh, things uh, on the indian economy could potentially look better we might get uh, interesting opportunities if there are uh, corrections along the way for a variety of reasons and uh, we might uh, choose to pick uh, you know interesting businesses uh, it is a time to You know, do good work uh, and wait for the prices, or maybe if you think the current prices are good, uh, let it on. Yeah. By the way, I I I believe you guys are doing some very interesting work. I had seen a presentation from one of your colleagues, uh, Aditya Kimka, uh, a couple of months back or three months back on healthcare. So that's interesting too. Would you want to end this conversation, Manal, with uh, telling us what you're doing at Infred because you are a a, a new AMC in that sense. Uh, what is the AUM? What is it that you guys are trying to do out there? Can you talk a bit about that? So we've just started our journey, uh, and we are uh, in the business of alternates uh, as of now. So we are, uh, you know, uh, having a license for alternate investment funds and PMSs. So we are solicitating money from our clients uh, into differentiated strategies and spaces uh, where we think there is potential to do well in terms of investment returns is substantial. and we want to add value to our clientele in in a unique way in a in a more committed way and our decision making and endeavor are aligned to our customers uh, uh, fully so uh, it's a journey that we began we have a vision of uh, being among the most respected uh, asset management companies in india and it's just a few steps that we've taken in that direction and we we hope we get there uh, as fast and as soon as we can okay interesting minal all the best for that thanks so much it was lovely talking to you and look forward to have you more often on the forum thank you thanks neera and viewers thanks for tuning into this edition of talking forum